Hi, I'm Marion McPartland. My guest today on Piano Jazz is saxophonist Chris Potter. He's a brilliant young talent, if there ever was one, and he composes and plays his own tunes. His musical vision keeps taking him to some highly imaginative places, and he's undoubtedly the most compelling saxophonist of his generation. And I really believe all that, Chris. You're just a young marvel. Well, gosh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, I knew you when you were younger. I think I met you in Columbia, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah, um, that is my hometown. I must have been maybe 15 or 16, something I think like you, that. you were, and yeah. you came in with your father, mm -hmm. and you had your horn, and I thought... Oh, goodness, what's going to happen now? <laughs> <laughs> and then you joined us, and you just played marvelously, and I was blown away. And I, you maybe you don't remember this, but I know I said to your father, oh, my goodness, he should join the Woody Herman Band or something. And your father <laughs> said, not till he's been through school. Yeah, I, I do remember that. And is that what <laughs> happened? You went through school? I did go through school, yes, yes. So when did you actually... Um, have a professional gig or start to play? Well, I guess the first actual gig I did, I was probably maybe 13 or 14, something like that. Wow. You know, just around the South Carolina area. But then I'm, I uh, moved to New York when I was 18, um, and I went to school like a to good boy. I went to the new school for, for one year, and then I went to Manhattan School of Music. Right. Did you go with Red Rodney right after that? Yeah, well, actually, that was during that during that time. Like a couple months after I moved to New York, I started playing with uh, Red. And you were going to school also at the same time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So which I just had to juggle a few things. You know? Well, but that put you right into the big time, pretty much working with Red, didn't it? It was it was quite an experience, you know, because I was so I was so uh, green. Really, I didn't really know what to expect. It was just amazing to be out there, you know. Boy, you, well, you were green then, but you changed color in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> how long were you with Red? Um, wow, how long was it? About four, four years. Yeah, maybe? yeah, some something like that. Uh, he passed away in, I believe, 93, something like that. So, That's so terrible. Such I think, yeah, it was up, I mean, it was up until then, really. Well, needless to say, I want to quiz you some more and talk about all kinds of things but it would be nice if we would play especially since we have this wonderful bass player that works with you all the time scott Carley on mm -hmm. bass and we could maybe play a tune we should do that what should we do i should care okay let's do it one two one, two, one, two. Thank you. 
Boy, that felt good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was wondering, how, how did you learn, like, all the standard tunes before you went off composing your own music? How did you learn all those? Just, I guess, Red Rodney played a few of them. Yeah, well, uh, the first music that I was really listening to was, was sort of the earlier stuff, you know, like the Duke Ellington band. You know, I was really into Johnny Hodges and Paul Gonzalez and Harry Carney and all those guys. And I sort of worked my way forward, I think, through the history. And I remember I, uh, you know, when I first heard Charlie Parker and I really didn't like it. And then, you know, I kept, kept giving it a shot. And then all of a sudden that, you know, all started of a making you sense. Did like it. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, it was like a, you know, the, the big bang or something. Yeah. Well, you picked a tune to play and I, want to make a comment on this because it was so funny. Um, this is one of uh, Charlie Parker and Dizzy's tunes, Hot mm. House, right? Right, right. And the first time I heard that, I was in Paris with um, Charles Delaunay, and, um, Jimmy and myself, and he played this record. And uh, I'd never heard anything like that. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I made the silliest remarks, you know, like, how do they do that? Do they have it all written down? What is the piano player? How does he know what he's doing? <laughs> <laughs> Something <laughs> stupid. So uh, it would be fun to to play that tune, which actually, it's a takeoff on um, I'm using the chords of, um, what is this thing called, love? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. So I'm dying to hear you play it. Well, I think it was my idea to play it, so hopefully I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when well, you're the guest, you should pick the tunes. Okay, well, let's do it. Okay. Thank you. 
Boy, that was one of their first things, wasn't it, Dizzy and Bird? Yeah, I, I believe it was written by, uh, I think it was Tad Dameron wrote it, but yeah, I remember hearing that, and, and it was, yeah, I, I actually remember the first time hearing that head, too, and I thought, wow, that is strange. What on earth are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> you had that feeling, too. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, they did a lot of those things at that time, but that's the first one I ever heard, and, mm-hmm. and of course, it's, I don't know what you'd call it, a jazz standard, I guess, and... Um, now it is, yeah. Now it is, yeah, but, I mean, I guess you were... You were listening to those guys, Dizzy and Bird, quite a lot. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. Do you play uh, play some of Dizzy's things, like Night in Tunisia and those things? Yeah, you know, it's 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 actually not not that often anymore that I'm in a situation where I do play a lot of standards. So it's sort of fun for me to revisit them. Well, I was wondering because, you know, now you're so far into your own thing, which is vastly different from playing a 32 bar tune mm-hmm. I mean can you go back to it without sort of thinking oh like uh, you know it's not fun for you anymore right you know it I think it's all in, in sort of how I think of it because if I think of it as a sort of a retro kind of, you know if I think of it as well it's been done before then yeah. then it's not as much fun but I but it, but the thing is I just I just you know love those songs and if yeah. I just you know just you know, for the love of playing those melodies again, you know that that I heard Bird play so well, or you know whoever. Um, there's a real joy in that for me. And um, of course, you can always put your own spin on them. Yeah, well, which... they're you know they're 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 so durable too. I mean, you can you can improvise over those <laughs> over lo- those same forms. I know? love that word. They're so durable. That's true. <laughs> they, in other words, you can do them forever because you can always yeah. keep changing and doing your own thing. Well, there's more to come with Chris Potter. I'm Mary McPartland, and this is Piano Jazz. Our program is made possible in part by a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts. <laughs> Now, I'm wondering what came first. I mean, did you start on piano before you started playing horn? I think I think what happened is just whenever I was over at someone's house that had a piano from, you know, from the time I was, you know, five or six, I guess, I would always go right to the piano and just start messing around with it. So I never really studied it formally, but I, you know, I would always just sort of uh, naturally want to you know figure things out on it so i i guess it was first in a way but i'm i'm not as studied on it but you play wonderful harmonies i'm just looking forward to what you and i are going to play and um what's a good suggestion well i was i was thinking maybe we uh we could play all the things you are in uh sort of the jim hall fashion i've been work, working with him some lately he does it as a, as a uh, waltz oh my goodness well if I don't lose my place, we could try that. <laughs> I think that would be... I would, have faith. You do? I have, I have more faith in you than in me, actually. <laughs> well, between us, we'll have, we have enough faith for both of us, okay. so it'll, it'll come <laughs> off. But you start it out, in the, and so I can hear how it goes. Okay. All right. I'll just start playing the melody.
Well, that was good. Look at the difference. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's really fun doing that. It's I never never played it that way before, but it it, it does fall into three four very easily. Yeah, it's yeah. It seems it seems to flow pretty naturally. I've I, I've I've never played with another piano player, so that's a real treat for me. You haven't? I don't believe so. My God, it's not... you're doing it like the man of born. You know, it's... <laughs> well, it's not that often you find two pianos in the same room, I guess. Well, uh, not only that, you don't always find two piano players <laughs> who listen to each other and sort of play compatibly. I guess that's yeah. the word I want because you are doing that as if you'd right. You know, I mean, I. I guess I can say I've done a few. I think so, yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, I find it very interesting um, hearing what the other person is going to do and mm -hmm. tr trying not to get in their way. So, um, anyway, playing two pianos isn't the only thing we're going to do, though, is it, Chris? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to doing a duet with you when you're, you're going to play tenor on this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go, I'm going to go Gee, back to my, we, um, my home. <laughs> We play. <laughs> we played this on a record we did for Concord. I was thinking to myself, I've got to grab this guy before he gets out of sight, and I can't have him on a record date. <laughs> That's what was going through my mind. Boy, aren't I lucky! So, and the same applies today. Mm. So, um, the tune is Naima, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. John Coltrane, wonderful song. Okay. Here we go. Here we go.
you know that's such a great tune to play on even though it it doesn't um what shall i say go very far afield mm, there's right. so much you can do within that framework yeah well you you uh, take take full advantage of it you know there, there was a version of this that we did on a recording that i i, I really remember that fondly that and i was sort of shocked at how far left you 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 took it <laughs> and uh same same there it was really 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 nice well you know it's not often we get to do this and you have to take i'm taking full advantage of you chris <laughs> trying to and um i think that came off beautifully anyway we'll have more in a minute my guest is chris potter with bassist scott Colley. I'm Marion McPartland, and this is Piano Jazz, made possible in part by the Baldwin Piano Company, manufacturers of the pianos heard on Piano Jazz. would be nice maybe we could do a tune from from your new cd mm -hmm. and your new record is on verve right right uh gratitude is the name of the record yeah. oh that's great and then you then you just thank all these different people like uh, that's the idea yeah. john coltrane and john coltrane and, and sonny rollins and lester young coleman hawkins wayne shorter yeah it's wonderful all my faves lovely idea <laughs> what do you think we could do uh well there's there's a couple standards on the cd including uh star eyes i think that might that might work well in this context it's mm. a good one now it's interesting you you did like dedications to a lot of people mm -hmm. who was this one dedicated to uh this was dedicated to charlie parker actually because i because i remember you know that was that was one of the first things that i ever heard him play yeah he had a record he had a great arrangement mm -hmm. on that well let's have a go at it. It's a very good tune. Love this tune. Here we go. Thank you. 
That sounded so good, and I'm sure Bird liked it. I hope so, wherever he is. Wherever he is, yeah, because um, that's something everybody, they always play that little special intro and ending, which is kind of nice Mm -hmm. when you think about it. And um, that tune has probably gone all over the world, although I, I can't think offhand who wrote it, but somebody will probably call up and tell me. (laughs) You know what we haven't had, and which I did hear on some of your recordings, like duets with with a saxophone and bass. Would you Mm -hmm. be willing to do one of those? I certainly would, yeah. Well, which one would you choose? What would you Um, do? I think think we'll play a tune of mine uh, that's entitled uh, Hieroglyph, which is, yeah, it's on Unspoken. Yeah, I did listen to that, yeah. and as I recall, it was sort of um, quirky, kind of going off in all directions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's not the best description, but I, you know, I needed to listen to it some more. But yeah. any, anyway, now I am going to listen to it some more. All right. So uh, I will pay close attention. <laughs> Thank you. 
You know, that piece is really interesting, and and I liked the way the bass part was written because um, it it seemed to be full enough, like whatever you put there seemed to... It, it didn't seem like it needed anything else. You know what I'm mm. trying to say? Oh, thanks. Yeah, I was trying to write it in such a way that it was, you know, the the bass part filled out the harmony so that it was pretty clear, you know, without... without uh, needing all the chords actually spelled out, you know. Well, it came off, and uh, now how did you think up a tune like that? Was that one that that just came to you as in a dream or something? I don't know. I think I think I started with the with the uh, you know there's there's that sort of vamp that goes through that uh, bass thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, Sounded sort of like a giant lumbering around. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Or it had a actually a kind of foreboding mm, right. air to it, like the you know pharaohs, you know. Yeah, something like that. So, Hieroglyph, I ended up calling yeah. it. Yeah, you know, it's like some writing that you can't understand. So yeah, it seems well, a little sinister somehow. Well, it certainly came off. Well, anyway, we'll have more in a minute. My guest is Chris Potter with bassist Scott Colley. I'm Marion McPartland, and this is piano jazz. <laughs> Suppose um, you and I have have a go at doing a totally free or abstract or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> something with no rules. All right. You want to have a go at it? Yeah, I I like the spirit of adventure. Yeah, me too. Here goes.
Well, I thought that was kind of uh, interesting, didn't you? <laughs> Definitely interesting. I think it was better than interesting, actually. <laughs> there were a couple of little themes going in there. Yeah. And um, I love doing that so much that I sometimes think, well, people listening are wondering what the heck we're doing, and so I right. maybe cut it shorter than I normally would because I go on for hours doing that. I know what you mean. There's a point at which it's sort of self-indulgent. and Yeah, exactly. But... Uh, but but a little bit of it, I think people can enjoy it, actually. I think, you know, understanding that it's completely improvised and there's no form except for what we make at the time. Right. And, um, no, I've had some pretty good comments on those on those things. And people having, like, giving a scenario, like what it reminds them of, mm -hmm. like walking right. through the woods or some sinister happening or did they get their own little <laughs> little idea about what it's meant to be hmm. i didn't have any ideas actually i was just listening to what you were doing and right and um it was nice that you could go from piano to um to sax and you know that gives it a little more of course we should have had S scott in there too but he's going to play on this next number mm -hmm. or unfortunately the last number because I hate it to be because I've had such a good time oh, playing with you guys. Yeah. It's really been a lot of fun, and I thank you for coming over here and doing piano jazz. Well, thank you so much for, uh, you know, for having us. Really, well, it's really a great experience for me, and um, I'm sure this last tune will be also. Um, this is one by Duke Ellington, written for John Coltrane. Mm -hmm. I only learned this thing just recently. I, somebody in Chicago played it, and I thought, what a cute little tune it is. So, um, Take the Coal Train, that's a good title. Mm -hmm. So, um, shall we wind up with that? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
boy. I could have gone on forever on that one. Yep. You've been listening to Piano Jazz with Marion McPartland and her guest Chris Potter with bassist Scott Colley, a program which was originally broadcast in 2001. Piano Jazz is a production of South Carolina ETV Radio. The producer is Sherry Hutchinson. Recording engineer, Anthony Rotolo. Mastering engineer, David Mitchell. Production manager, Audrey Shiflett. Executive producer, Elaine Freeman. We'd love to hear from you. Our email address is pj at scetv.org. Our postal address is 1041 George Rogers Boulevard, Columbia, South Carolina, 29201. Support for Piano Jazz comes from the Lila Wallace Reader's Digest Fund, the National Endowment for the Arts, the Friends of Piano Jazz, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina Chamber of Commerce, NPR and NPR member stations. Additional support comes from Jazz Times Magazine, providing a window on the jazz world since 1970, with artist features, reviews, and more, on the web at jazztimes.com. Support for NPR comes from NPR contributors, which include the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, helping NPR advance journalistic excellence in the digital age, and the Limelson Foundation, committed to improving lives through invention in the U.S. and developing countries, on the web at lemelson.org. This is NPR. PR. 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 PR.